Yeah, so in certain fields, so um, I co-authored a paper with Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Wait, what is that? Have you heard of Jordan Peterson? Yeah, yeah. What did you, yeah. you wrote a paper with him? Or? Yes. Oh, wow. In uh, where we showed, uh, when I was in grad school, uh, he's uh, he was a legendary creativity researcher. Um, uh, n- never saw that trajectory. I, that he's, that's <laughs> why, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> but, but, but in grad, grad school, I knew him as the, uh, he studied weight and inhibition and creative achievement and um, it was such an influ- deep wow. influence of, on my work on creativity. Creativity and the biological mechanisms of creativity. Also, Colin DeYoung, who uh, was a grad student of his, uh, was my mentor in grad school. So uh, he's he's just like, hey, you know, um, should we should we add this co-author, <laughs> my advisor, uh, Jordan? And I was like, sure. Um, but uh, that paper in particular showed, uh, in, to answer your question, we showed that IQ was a substantial predictor of creative achievement in in, in um, scientific fields. But it zero correlated with artistic creative achievement. Oh wow! The thing that was the best predictor of both scientific and artistic creative achievement um, was this field, uh, this this personality called a domain called openness to experience. Um, but you could actually break down the, the different facets of openness to experience, and you found intellectual curiosity, curiosity was a better predictor of uh, the art of the of no, no, the art of, 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 of science. Scientific creativity, um, whereas um, more like um, raw openness to experience, you know, like how open are you to your experiential world and your emotions and um, uh, and aesthetics, you know, beauty uh, was more correlated with artistic creative achievement. So we found that level of kind of nuance there. But we found overall, and I found that since that paper, we found my colleagues and I, um, I've spent maybe 10 years studying this openness to experience trait find over and over again is the best predictor of creative create creativity that you can find. It out predicts all the other personality traits. Some people may have this myth of like the neurotic creative, mm-hmm. you know, or have this myth of um, uh, that you have to be like agreeable to be, you know, like turns out e- assholes are equally <laughs> as creative. <laughs> neurotic people um, do not have an upper edge, you know, uh, uh, I don't have an edge. I don't know. <laughs> <for edge. That's laughs> weird. I, I always like make up new things on the spot. If you <laughs> new just phrases. say it with conviction, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll buy it probably. It's all good. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it really openness to experience was yeah. like a super duper uh, predictor. So there's, so what you're saying is there was a spectrum uh, of creativity. Like yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, we looked at creative achievement again. Uh, uh, Jordan uh, and Shelly, his, his student Shelly Carson, um, did a great work in creating the creative achievement questionnaire, which I, I've used a lot in my research. Which allows um, it. It. I think it's. Uh, it, it. It goes beyond this kind of like um, so maybe some more subjective um, versions of create uh, tests of creativity because you can actually uh, put quantifiable like i've had this many publications in peer reviewed journals if it's a scientific domain or if it's in the arts i've 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 been recognized for my accomplishments uh, publicly and then you can look at different levels of creative achievement and we looked across 10 different domains from uh, dance you know to humor to scientific inventions to cooking um uh and uh yeah we were able to to to, to differentiate between these different things. But yeah, IQ was irrelevant to artistic creativity. Isn't that interesting? It, it yeah. is interesting. Yeah. Kind of frustrating. Uh, why is that frustrating? <laughs> well, because if so many of us are measuring, say, intelligence or in schools, they're, you know, dictating a lot of things based off of these tests. Yeah. And not say creativity. Yeah, I think that's a little frustrating. Oh yeah, that is frustrating. Yeah, of which I think we both kind of experienced a little bit. But you're not frustrated that like IQ should be more of a relevant factor in the arts. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no, no, no. I mean, no, you know, what would that, what would that do? Yeah, I know. Um, so when you're studying creativity, like when you talk about the creative mind, you yeah. talk about the creative mind. What yeah. what do you mean by that? You're asking really good questions. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank <laughs> yeah, you that's a good question. Uh, you know, what uh, the, the creative mind is obviously not a monolithic thing. You know, um, I think like the the thing that tends to characterize most creators is that they have messy minds. Mm-hmm. I use that. I use that. I love that you said that because yeah. I, I. Do you feel like you have a messy mind? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And there are other traits that we will talk about that I, I when you it was the first time I had ever. I heard that heard them worded this way that I was like, oh my god, yes! Like when you talk about the the personality paradoxes, 
Yes. And the positive and negative emotions. But we, I'll let you, you know, finish first, and then we can wonderful go into that. Yeah. Um, you know, the the messy minds. You know, we we have we've fi- we've been publishing neurological evidence. Roger Beatty has really taken the charge on that, and I want to give him a lot of credit. He's re- leading the way in the neuroscience of creativity. And uh, you know, we've been publishing papers showing that creative individuals are better able to traverse these different brain networks that in most people are segregated. So for most people, they either are very good at like focusing and concentration, or you're a daydreamer, or flighty kind of person. But creative individuals are able to be very adaptive and flexible in toggling between these different brain networks. So sometimes they're really good at um, uh, at just letting anything enter their consciousness and kind of entertaining any possibility, even the most politically incorrect ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, and then sometimes they're able to uh, hone in more on a particular idea and explore it. So they can, they're can they really quick at, at going back and forth between these different modalities. Um, this research is also uh, accompanies, accompanying this research is an interest I have in the link between mental illness and creativity because, um, and this relates to the messy minds aspect, because highly creative individuals uh, at certain states of their creative process, are in, their brain scans are indistinguishable from mental patients of schizophrenia. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but that's why it's really important to view the whole pro- the whole thing as a, a messy process that creative people go through. You have to have trust that they'll get there. Picasso often said, I didn't know where I was going till I got there. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's there were various stages along the way of what Picasso was doing where people were like, that's insane. Right, <laughs> right. But it's the big picture that's important with creativity, not the specific state or the particular moment. I do think creative individuals are uh, better able to um, dance uh, in, uh, you know, uh, with, with madness, but... Um, or flirt, flirt with it, but are able to come back and have reality monitoring as well. That's what separates them from mental patients. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So let's, I mean, uh, the personality traits I was talking to before, uh, these are some of the things that I I just, I, it just, just really got to me where, you know, you talk about the uh, creative mind, the highly creative minds, um, having high, what, what, you can probably phrase it better, the, the positive and negative emotions that they're able to kind of yeah. jump between those more than, than others. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of a, the greater openness to the complexity of their experience. Absolutely. I mean, Frank Barron was uh, a, a seminal creativity researcher, and he brought together some of the biggest thinkers of the time. This is the 60s. Um, Truman Capote was there, and he brought them to a renovated fraternity house at USC and had them spend a week there taking psychological tests um, and he found, and personality tests as well. And he found that they scored sky high on every measure of mental illness that he gave them, oh the, MM, the MMPI. Yeah. Um, and they simultaneously scored on every, high on every measure of mental health that he gave them. So he was like, what do I do with this beast, this creature of humanity, this creative person who simultaneously, and he has a quote, you know, the creative person is... Um, is 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 adamantly uh, insane yet the most sane uh, <laughs> human we have in our gene pool. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, quite a paradox that you see. Yeah. And you talk about the paradoxes a lot with creative minds. Yes. The uh, you gave that example of the rock stars, the rock bands that you that you had talked with, like when they're off stage. Oh yeah, Jennifer Grimes uh, did that research. Mm. Uh, for her master's thesis, where she went backstage at Ozfest, yeah, behind the curtain, and and some of these heavy metal, you know, musicians that were just on stage like thrashing their <laughs> guitars were were, be, were said to Jennifer, they're like, she'd be like, do you ever, you know, would you describe yourself as a highly sensitive person? And they'd be like, oh yes, I um really can't stand lots of stimulation. Um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, this is like behind the afterwards, you know, I really um just you know um need to really have my own personal space and and tranquility and downtime you know and um you know when they could control it like they did on stage Mm. 
that was beneficial to them, but they didn't like the unplanned sort of interruptions, you know? Um, they probably wouldn't enjoy too much going to concerts. They'd probably enjoy performing at the concerts. Um, uh, Michael Jackson, by the way, as well, you know, would talk about how, right. like, um, he was, I mean, he was uh, painfully shy right. as a person, um, but when he was on stage, he would transform into something. So that duality is, is something very common among performers. Right, right, right. Isn't, uh, I think you talked about the journalist Deborah Ward and how she wrote um, about creativity being the pressure valve for, uh, I think she was talking about um, the sensitivity of highly creative minds and uh, creativity being the pressure valve for cre creatives, like for all that they have in them, they get it all out in whatever yeah. their creative outlet is. I view creativity yeah. as the ultimate integration of our whole self. I really do. You know, I think that, um, uh, like, I teach a course uh, at Columbia on the science of living well. And a big part of that course is, is helping my students embrace the dark side. And they, they find they love that. I mean, they they love embracing their dark side, getting permission to do so. Yeah. These college students are so stressed out these days. You know, the suicide rates are so high. There's um, mm -hmm. just so much... Uh, anxiety and 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 it and to be able to just be able to sit and integrate in a healthy way as opposed to feeling the pressure to constantly be perfect or to like show this face of happiness you know all these college students are all suffering yet they all feel this pressure with each other to show how put together they are mm -hmm. you know um to me creativity is this thing that allows you to get out all of, all of this stuff in a in a productive uh, outlet for the world, you know, and uh, we shouldn't be able to we shouldn't be inhibiting certain uh, strong potentialities within us um, because it'll come out some way, you know, and and if we're not controlled or conscious about it, it'll come out in destructive ways. Um, my heroes, one of my hero intellectual um, uh, influences, Raul May, who was a humanistic psychologist, and I'm a big, I consider myself a humanistic psychologist. Um, uh, he called it the demonic. He said the demonic is anything that has a uh, strong enough power within us to overtake the whole system, the whole person. He said the, di the, di the di demonic is not the demon, you know, it, 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 it can go either way, you know, um, mm. and our dynamic, di our, di our, di our, di our demonic, when it's not well integrated, can lead to um, uh, w the Holocaust, you know, but when, uh, when healthfully integrated can lead to our highest heights of, of creative uh, potential um, in a positive way. So I really resonate with that. Is hey everyone, thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe, and two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.